If this message found you, if it popped up on your feed, if you felt drawn to the title or the image, this reading is for you. This is a message directly from God, from the source, from creator in regard to love. Doesn't have to be romantic love, but it's some kind of love that spirit wants to talk about today. So last night I was getting ready for bed and I heard love is a three letter word. And I was like, what does that mean? And I write everything down, obviously, as you guys know, if you're not new to the channel, in my synchronicities journals, I do them every single month as guided by spirit. And so I wrote that down and I was like, question mark, what does this mean? And I was like, you is a three letter word. One is a three letter word. This morning I looked it up and I realized that there was something about God. It was like, God is a three letter word for love. And there was another thing, which I have the poem in front of me here. And it goes, love, what's, yeah. Love shouldn't hurt. Love is acting, not a feeling because feeling comes and goes, but acting will be there in the mind and thought. Love is a three-letter word, not a four-letter word. So love is caring, not abuse, because abuse leaves you with fear. So I feel like spirit wants to talk about love today in the various forms that it may present itself and how it is an action and not necessarily a feeling or something that we even experience. It's, it's something we choose to do, and it needs to come from this place of care rather than of fear. So that being said, if this message resonates with you already, we're going to get more information and guidance from spirit. If you're new to this channel, hey, it's Tarot and Beyond. My name is Siobhan. I'm a psychic channel and I bring through messages from the divine for awakening and awakened ones. Okay, so we've got a couple of cards here. The seven of wands. So this is like the seven of wands has to do with boundaries. And I feel like this message is about being able to have these boundaries, to be able to act in a way that is loving rather than, I did just hear self-effacement, self-effacement to not self-efface. Let me look up self-effacement really quickly. What does that mean? Not making yourself noticeable or not trying to get the attention of other people. So it's like hiding yourself away. Something about that. Maybe these are unnecessary boundaries and it's not allowing other people to love you in the way you deserve or you're preventing yourself from loving others because to, to act in love is to be noticeable. Ace of Cups. Yeah, this is to do with self-love. I think at the core of it, it's the most self-loving thing you can do to be, I'm hearing willing to be seen. Okay, this is actually not the message I was expecting that we were going to be talking about given the prompt that they that they gave me or that they channeled through. But this is something that's been coming up in some of the recent readings. I've noticed that I think it was in the August reading, there was stuff about that and some of the previous ones as well. Even on the member side of the channel, there have been message, messages about being seen, being in the spotlight, being visible, um, being willing to be seen, all of these things keep coming up. So there seems to be a correlation here between that and love, like how you're able to give love or to receive love. It's It feels like both to me. It feels like both. The chariot, this way or that way, you've got a choice. And this is what, this is what the act of love is, is choice. It's free will. The sidecar with the cat and it is so cute. I don't know why that's pulling my attention. Spirit will draw me to things that need to be talked about. So there's something about a side sidecar. Sidecar reminds me of something that's kind of like been put to the side or it's not the main focus. Something about, yeah, I'm hearing delegation. Something about delegating. Delegating to someone not putting yourself to the side or on the side. Or not being put on the side by someone else. Like if they're not actively choosing you, then that, it's like the, the actions speak louder than words kind of thing, right? Like love is not what you say. Love is what you do. King of Cups. And the, the King of Cups is the most loving king in the deck. This is the act of love in action. I'm hearing self-protection. Okay, that's where we started out with the Seven of Wands, which is about personal boundaries and self-protection. And there, every time I look at the seven of wands, I hear self-effacement. Okay. So somebody here, I don't know if this is you or whoever you're dealing with here, 
does not want to be seen. I'm hearing as who they truly are. Why though? The five of wands, because there's a fear of conflict. I'm hearing fear of taking action and love is action. Love needs to be shown through action. It is a choice. I keep hearing that. So this person, if we're talking about a person, they may be looking at you from afar. I'm seeing the um, telescope in his hand. They may be viewing you from afar. There may be distance between you emotionally or physically. And it's because they have kind of put things on the side. They've, I feel like they've put their feelings on the side. They've put their feelings on the side. I wasn't sure if this is going to be a, like a full-on love reading, but I guess here we are. And that's not something that you deserve. And it's not something that serves them, I'm hearing. It's not something that serves them. Because this lesson for them is around embracing, or I'm hearing drinking from their own cup, and they showed me the goblet in his hand. The king of cups needs to drink from his own cup, meaning that self-love needs to be given here. Ace of Cups is self-love too. So there's there needs to be a decision by someone, possibly a masculine energy, to love themselves so that they can be seen in a particular light, not because they want to be seen that way, but because it's important for them to come out of their shell or something like that, to not fear being seen and to not continue these patterns of self-effacement. I'm seeing the striped clothing here in this card talking almost like a, it's reminding me of being in jail, like old school prisoner outfits. So this person feels like they've been stuck for a while, or maybe you felt like you've been trapped, trapped in a cycle at a crossroads this way or that way. Which way do I go? Do I choose me? Do I choose this relationship? Do I choose? Is this person choosing me or not choosing me? Five of Cups. Oh, I did. Okay. I heard time to let it go. This is an interesting depiction of the Five of Cups, though, because she's crying over these three spilled cups when there's an entire sort of birthday party or something going on over here. And it's kind of reminding me of that saying or that phrase, it's my party, I'll cry if I want to. <laughs> so there's maybe something here about being able to get in touch with your deeper emotions and allowing yourself to feel those things, even if they're uncomfortable or don't seem to suit the moment. It's like there's repressed emotions that are coming up and I'm kind of getting this sense of past energy, past conflicts, or I am hearing resolutions trying to happen, but it's, it's almost like those resolutions try to happen through the repeating of those patterns or through the same sort of scenarios as they occurred in the past that's how kind of that's how karma works so that we can see it understand the pattern and start to change our our actions oh yeah karma has to do with action as well and if we're talking about love in the context of action too this is talking about clearing karma through love through new and different acts of love the hermit so for those of you who were drawn to this reading you may be going through a healing phase right now where you are pulling back, where you have been in solitude for a period of time, or you feel called to do that because there is a natural grieving process that is occurring. And so this love that was not given through action to you, and instead there was conflict where there should have been reciprocity, or there was separation where there should have been intimacy, or closeness, you are taking some time now to be able to go inward and to heal yourself. I'm seeing layers in her dress, something about layers. There's like layers to this that you've had to go through, layers of unpacking, layers of karma, layers of self-understanding, different options and choices that you've had to make at each pivot point. I'm seeing like different points in the maze or in the road where you've had to adjust the empress. I'm hearing sensitivity is at an all-time high. And then this, there's a song playing in my head and it's like, I'm at an all-time low, 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 low. So you may be feeling like you're at an all-time low 
because your sensitivity is at an all-time high. But I'm also seeing the witch's hat and the broom, and I feel like there's um, a progression to this, or there's something magical about this, even though it feels like a low point, or like a point of, I'm hearing contention. I was going to say, yeah, tension, but contention. Let's look that up. I feel like I'm, I'm very googly today. <laughs> googly. Let's look up that because spirit will bring through specific words for a reason. Disagreement. The disagreement that results from opposing arguments. That's the five of wands. There's a lot of contention about the issue for every person firmly in favor. There's someone fiercely against it. Yeah. So there's like some, there's been some kind of opposition and maybe this was within yourself and that's why you've been needing to take some time to go within and to, I'm hearing the word divulge, divulge, divulge what? Queen of Cups, your true emotions. Look at that. The Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. So counterpart energy. There needs, to, there needs to be a balance here or the mirroring needs to be more accurate. But there was disagreement. Disagreement about which way to go or how to show love. Different. I'm hearing different love languages. So if this is you and a partner or somebody that you were in relationship to, if this is like to do with you and your person, whoever they are, it feels like there was, I'm hearing misunderstanding, like misunderstanding the other and their needs or the way that love should have been acted upon based on the care that was needing to be given. That's all coming straight through from spirit channeled messages there. The care that was needing to be given the Eight of Swords, that's that prisoner energy that they were showing me with the striped outfit. That's the Eight of Swords is like being in jail in the mind. So, but look, again, they're drawing my attention to the hat and the broom. I know that this is the everyday witch tarot, and so there's a lot of that, but they drew my attention to this one down here, and I'm seeing it here show up. So it's like this, this magic, maybe you felt like you've been cut off from your own magic. Or needing to get out of your, I'm hearing getting out of your own way. I was going to say getting out of your own head, one, two, two, two on the recording time. There needs to be balance here between you and another person. It's giving me this energy of opposition like me versus you or the self versus relationship dynamics in general. How do you balance your needs with someone else's? How do you communicate those mutually to understand? How do you connect at these deep levels? What is your love language? Have you discussed that? There, do you agree on those things? Those are the types of things. And it's almost like there's been a spiraling in the mind of, I'm hearing confusion. Yeah, confusion about how to move forward or what you need to do to be able to re-embrace your own magic and to be able to express this to the other person or to have it understood or reciprocated in a way that's healthy. Okay, the Knight of Swords. Now, here was another thing. Actually, I I did, let's see, the Eight of Wands on the bottom. Yeah, okay, both of these are talking about communication and using your power. So I do want to mention that because the other thing that I wrote on this page was that the Little Mermaid kept coming up. There were several references to it. I It came up in one of my readings I did recently, and then I happened to come across another reading of my own from like months ago where it was referenced and another reading by 13 Moon Tarot where she referenced it as well. And it was from like a year ago that she recorded that, that reading. So as you can see here, I just channeled some messages out. Some of these are for me, but maybe they'll resonate with you as well. So there's something about speaking up, being able to communicate, releasing and letting go of shame and fear regarding voicing your truth and upholding your deepest desires. So there's something out here that needs to be voiced. There's That's what the Knight of Swords and the Eight of Wands are both talking about here to me. It's like there needs to be, I'm hearing abrupt, Okay, abrupt communication may be coming in. This could be from someone who was holding back or who was afraid to speak their truth because of some previous disagreements, maybe between you and them, or because that's what they've experienced in the past, being misunderstood, I'm hearing. If this is you, again, same thing. And this is why there's been time to contemplate the deeper meaning behind this or to understand what the message is in regard to this lesson because it does it feels like a lesson around self-love now i do want to get some energy oracle cards as well can we get more information door to value wow okay i'm hearing what do you value 
what do you value? Yeah. Love languages are kind of based on what we value, right? It's, it's like, um, if I value communication, then my love language is going to be primarily words of affirmation and, or like verbal communications of love. If you value acts of service, it's going to be different. Or if you value, um, what's, you know, the other ones, I can't remember. Can you put them in the comments? If you guys remember what all of the love languages are, let's put them down there so we can all see them. But is I'm hearing from spirit, what do you value? And this is what they want you to contemplate on when you're in this introspection phase, whether it's a phase that lasts a long time, or whether it's just a moment where you go inward and start asking yourself these questions, because the empress here is also talking about value. And I'm hearing personal worth. Okay, so this is like the real core of it. It's like your sense of self worth and this other person and theirs as well, but it, it does feel like there's a mirroring effect happening here. So your self-worth is going to be mirrored by the other person person's actions and vice versa. Woman holding a coin. Wow, lots to do with money here. Door to value and woman holding a coin. I'm hearing prosperity lies ahead. And that's actually like that's a direct quote from a different card in the Moonology deck super random but that's and it's i think that's something to do with the taurus new moon or taurus full moon so taurus could be significant here definitely financial stability no they just sorry they interrupted me and they said no it's to do with security so it's not even to do with money itself it's how money represents security and that's the message they're trying to bring through it's about inner security how secure do you feel to be able to express how you feel and, and what your truth is or to stand up for your boundaries and assert your needs. And same thing with this other person. Rest and rejuvenation. This is most definitely, most definitely a time for rest and rejuvenation because it feels like there's been, I'm hearing trial and error. It feels like there has been some trials, some errors that were made in those trials and things being a little bit difficult. I also got this this deck out. Spirit drew me to this one. Capricorn and Gemini. Okay, Capricorn and Gemini could be significant or Capricorn season and Gemini season could have been significant to this pattern. Capricorn Cap, Capricorn Capricorn I'm hearing steadfast. Something about steadfast. Look how they're cuddling together here in Gemini. That's so cute. So I feel Obviously, communication is important here. Gemini is all about communication. And I can say that because I'm a Gemini rising. So it's like all I do is communicate. And it feels like somebody else may have been a little bit more focused on the physical aspects of communication. Like acts of service or gift giving as a love language. But somebody here needs to voice something, whether it's you or them. I do feel like information or I'm hearing confirmation. Confirmation is coming in. In this reading or in general? In general and in this reading. Okay. Something's going to boil over. They just showed me the cauldron bubbling over. So something's going to boil over. Somebody needs to, I'm hearing spill the beans. Somebody needs to speak the truth here. And it's going to come out because it's just, it's just like simmering under the surface. It's like the pressure they're showing me now clairvoyantly a pot with the lid on and the stove is set to high. And it's like that pressure is going to build until it explodes out. It, it can't happen any other way because that heat is staying on at that level It and the lid is on. So it's going to burst. It's going to Mars. That's what, Mars is that pressure. Ma Mars is the pressure cooker. Mars is the heat. Mars literally rules like hot <laughs> the stove, you know? I'm hearing don't get burned. Don't get burned again or don't get burned. Hmm. Mars is just about to move into Gemini at the time I'm filming this reading. It's a, it's a timeless reading, so you could come back to this at any time. But there's something about Mars in Gemini that could be where this spills out, where it, I'm hearing comes to light. Something is going to come to light. Reaching out, somebody reaching out. Aquarius could be significant here as well. So we've got a lot of zodiac signs coming up. We had Taurus in that previous reference, Capricorn, Aquarius, Gemini.
challenger. Yeah, that's that five of wands energy again. It feels like this has been a challenge. Leo on the bottom, filming this in Leo season. I mean, so it. I think this this person, if this is someone we're talking about here, they're in a rest phase right now because they're dealing with a lot of anxiety. So they're going through it in their head and they're battling with themselves or they're challenging their own beliefs at the moment about what they value or maybe that maybe you setting a boundary has challenged that belief within them. You choosing self-care, you choosing to be alone, you choosing to grieve rather than to continue to persist or to pursue because Mars is the pursuer, challenger fears, feel, fears, ooh, feels like a pursuit type of energy, but maybe you were pursuing out of fear and then this led to disagreement. It's like a, it's, it's giving me sort of runner chaser type of energy dy dynamics, but things need to be a lot more free flowing energetically there needs to be room for separation I'm hearing room for separation so that the lessons can be learned and integrated that's coming directly from spirit that's what they just said so that the lessons can be learned and integrated and something about pronunciation because I'm having to really pay attention to how I'm saying my words like I'm noticing that I'm having to kind of over pronounce these words because I was almost slurring my speech together Partially that's because I just woke up and I have TMJ and when I wake up in the morning, my jaw's really tight. But um, I also looked up and on my computer, it says pronunciation. So I was like, oh, those two things happened at the same time. That's significant. So this could be that they are working on their words. I'm hearing again, words of affirmation. So how are they going to pronounce their words or, or pro a pronouncement of truth, you know, like pronouncing saying it, speaking it, voicing it. I'm hearing getting their voice back. This, po this poison, oh my God, this person was poisoned. That's that reference to the Little Mermaid where it's like the poison, not the, the Little Mermaid wasn't poisoned, but she had her, no, she was because um, Ursula created that spell in the cauldron, right? The cauldron boiling over. The poison inside needs to get out or it needs to be expelled or excreted there was some kind of a curse here and since we were talking about karma earlier this could have been like a karmic situation yes a karmic partner a karmic relationship or a karmic lesson of some type that is presenting almost like a curse i'm hearing the curse of the forgotten or lost word what does that mean spirit the curse of the forgotten or lost word and they're showing me Ariel clutching her throat after she, after her voice is extracted from her. This is very much to do with the throat chakra. Okay. And they're, they're showing me birds singing. Birds singing could be a symbol or a synchronicity or some something. It's like the freedom to sing. Ooh, that reminds me of something I saw the other day. Um... I can't remember who it was, but it was like something about there's nothing so sad as a songbird in a cage. And that's bringing me back to that prison energy again and the eight of swords. So maybe you've felt like you were in a cage. And this other person being verbally repressed or in a cage as well is a mirror of that. Hmm. I feel like I want more information and I didn't plan any other decks, but I did notice this, my, my channeled messages deck when I was laying out the cards. So let me go into this for a little bit more detail here. What is going on in this? I want to say situation ship. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is like a relationship. It feels situation ship E purpose but there's a purpose to it or it's connected to your purpose self-love i'm hearing is your purpose this is the purpose of the lifetime whoa this is the unlocking of the value within the self the woman holding a coin this may even be directly connected to your money or finances because i talk about this a lot and it's been coming up in readings recently so this seems relevant it's like when you when you value yourself and you set those healthy boundaries within self-love and, and re relationships with other people, 
you are maintaining and sustaining and even increasing your vital force energy. And vital force energy is the currency of the non-physical realm. And that energy is translated physically in the 3D into money. So this is connected to your purpose around, yeah, I'm hearing self-love and self-care. I'm hearing assertion, not fearing conflict. The contention in the past may have caused you to cave under pressure, but I'm seeing the purpose of this pattern is for you to be able to face these disagreements head on and possibly for this other person to learn that lesson as well. Potential. Ooh, that's, that's kind of triggering for me. I'm like, don't, I'm like, guys, don't get attached to potential in someone. You know, they have to prove, they have to work for it. Capricorn is like willing to work for it, you know, through actions. It's not about, okay, I just heard he said, she said something about he, sh he said, she said. Reminds me of she sells seashells by the seashore. It's like a tongue twister. Pronunciation. Something about that is this person is tongue tied and there's potential for them to open up. And there's a lot of love here. There's a potential for love, but it's like they're tongue tied and they're not speaking their truth or they don't know how to, they want to, but there's fear of rejection or not even from you. It's like a deep-seated fear of rejection. And this actually is reminding me of something I saw this morning as well. And I always pay attention to everything that happens before, during, and after a reading because it's connected. There was a short that came up on my YouTube feed randomly. Don't know where this came from. But they were talking about how men fear rejection because it's like a fundamental, a fundamental sort of... Um, reproductive statement and it's basically like I don't want to have sex with you and if I don't want to have sex with you that means you shouldn't reproduce it's it's all kind of like reading between the lines or like this underlying communication that's not actually being voiced directly but like that's what they're taking from it at this very fundamental survivalist level is like oh that means my genes aren't worthy of continuing and you want me to go extinct but that's not what's actually happening right obviously but that's subconsciously what may be happening is that this person feels like they're not even worthy of existing and so they're scared of themselves really is like at the end of the day okay yeah, it's mental. It's so mental. This person is just very up in their head. I'm hearing stuck, trapped. Again, they said mirroring. So this could be something that you're feeling as well. Married. Ooh. Again, potential. It's like, I want to say don't get attached to potential, but it's maybe like there's this feeling of we could be married or maybe you are married to this person and in separation, or you were married and then separated, because the Five of Cups here is talking about some kind of loss. Even if it's the loss about potential, bummed out, yes. But that, like Five of Cups is major bummed out energy. It's full on grief. But in this case, bummed out about the loss of the potential here because of the challenges that got in the way. So what's meant to happen here, Spirit? Like what... What is meant to happen between or in this connection? What is meant to happen? What is the purpose of this or the outcome? Oh, 144. This is an activation. It's connected to your purpose and it's meant to increase your sense of self-worth. It's challenging you to uphold your frequency, I'm hearing. Despite being bummed out or disappointed or let down or grieving manifested. The, this, this was something that was manifested. Potential manifested from the mental realm. Yeah, be, be very intentional with your thoughts because what you think is what you will create. What you think becomes what you do or don't do. And that's where the karma is involved here. And there's something about this curse that they're bringing me back to. So there's something, maybe this is a potential that manifested to help you break the mental slavery of some kind. 
cord. Yeah, to cut the cords of attachment. This may have even been like a past life marriage situation. Where there was a lot of, um, I'm hearing attachment. Okay. Like it, so it didn't work out like that. I, okay, I should have said this when I was talking about the self-effacement message before and how this message has been coming up in some of the readings. It was this card that came out in one of the recent readings. I can't remember if it was a member's reading or what, but it came out. Actually, I think it was on both sides, the member side of the channel and on the public side of the channel. And the camera shy, th that's what I was seeing in my mind when I was talking about that. So the whole purpose of this is to kind of like get you or the, to get this person out of their shell. Because there is a potential here to connect, but I'm because I'm seeing a cord of attachment that needs to be reconciled here or that needs to be cut at the mental level. It's like um, a mental attachment. But... The reason that this is all happening is not to bum you out or it's not to disappoint you or to leave you like hanging. There's, first of all, there's a need for connection. I keep hearing, I was going to say closure, but they said connection. Now, Spirit, can you clarify, is this connection through the attachment or is this meant to clear the attachment so that the connection can flourish? They said both and the connection with self. So this is really the core purpose of it. It's the connection with self. Mm -hmm. Can I clarify married? Like, can you tell me what's going on with married? They said split the deck. The tower. Okay. So that marriage ended in a previous lifetime or in this lifetime. It could have been mirroring that in this lifetime as well, if that's the case. But It's like there was a connection and then it crumbled. But it feels like this was intentional. Like it like it needed to happen because if it didn't, then it wouldn't have created this potential to become more. It, they keep telling me there's a purpose to this and I still don't really fully understand what the purpose is, but I guess it's to lead you, I'm hearing, oh, lead you to your benevolent other. Lead you to your benevolent other. And they're bringing me back to the beginning with that message of acts of love rather than love of abuse being about fear. It's acts of love. But benevolent is about being generous and being kind and loving. Supportive. I'm hearing something about supportive. Being understood. So th the purpose of this relationship is to lead you to this benevolent other spirit is this benevolent other this person or no i heard placeholder placeholder what do you mean this person is a placeholder what they're showing me um like a table setting okay that kind of reminds me of um like they were showing me like a what are those things called like a table mat or table not tablecloth uh placemat a placemat a place could be significant mat the name mat could be significant um but that was also reminding me of a placeholder and a table setting at like a wedding and there you know how they have like your name there and it holds your place so you're meant to sit there but they didn't answer my question <laughs> because i asked is this person that we're talking about your benevolent partner are they the counterpart or are they a placeholder? Okay, they said, well, it's the same thing. And then they're showing me that two people can't sit in the same seat. Oh, that's interesting. I've also been getting synchronicities about uh, musical chairs and Duck Duck Goose. So again, it's like competition, runner chaser energy, something about replacing in replacing in the spot or like competing for a spot to sit down and now they're showing me at, at a wedding again how it's like you have that one spot two people can't sit in that same chair so if the spot is filled it's filled does this mean that the cord needs to be cut 
so that that space can become available for the benevolent other to come in? They said yes or. What do you mean yes or? <laughs> you guys, sometimes I get so frustrated with spirit because they're cryptic and they're, they, they just, yeah, anyway. Yes or what? They said yes or the person. Oh my God, that's so frustrating because then you're like, is that the person? Am I supposed to invest this energy in this person? They're saying no. Invest the energy in yourself. Cut the cord with the person. And if, if, they, if they manifest into your life, you will see the potential. The placeholder will be filled. I'm hearing placeholder will be filled. They keep showing me people at a wedding and there's two chairs now that they're showing me. Before it was just the one, but now there's the two. And there's places or name settings beside each one. So this could be literal, like going to a wedding with this person. Or this could be obviously symbolic because most things that spirit brings through are symbolic. And we do have married here. But the way I'm seeing this wedding setting, it looks like it's not like you and this other person up on the main chairs, although that is kind of something to do with being seen as well. It feels like being in the audience or being in the, being in the, like at a different table. Okay. I am hearing jumping for joy. Jumping for joy. Mm, three of swords. That's the opposite of joy. <laughs> Couldn't even pick it up. An ace of swords underneath that. Three of swords. Things were spilled, but maybe not with the other person. Like, did you communicate this to them? How you're feeling? Do, do they know how you feel? I keep hearing communication incoming, communication incoming, communication incoming. So someone may reach out to you or communicate with you. They're a little camera shy though. Like they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be, they don't, they don't feel comfortable voicing how they feel. But what you're meant to be doing right now, I feel, is going through this grieving process and letting go of whatever happened here. It feels like detachment. And you guys probably, if you're not new to the channel, you've heard me say this before. I say detachment leads to connection. True detachment leads to connection. Thank you. Confirmation on my laptop. Because when we are attached to something, it's kind of like um, mice and men, you know, like we get to, we get, oh, it's so cute. And then we crush it. And so there's a, a level of freedom that comes from detachment. And that's the energy of like the trapped songbird or the prisoner. It's like there needs to be freedom here. There needs to be freedom to exist. I'm hearing coexist as well, to coexist separately, independently, and then together. But what I'm also seeing here is that this, this detachment, what it does is it gives you the freedom and autonomy to be able to cut any cords of attachment connected to this purpose of you raising your frequency, which helps you to manifest new potentials in regard to, they keep saying jumping for joy. Yeah, you're going to be excited about something. And that's another synchronicity I've been seeing for a couple of weeks now is the word excitement and excited or exciting. That's something spirit has been continually bringing through. And I'm hearing get excited, get excited, because there's something about that frequency that's important or focusing on yourself allows that excitement to come in. Yeah. Things moving quickly. The eight of wands here being the like the underlying energy is, is a very fast exciting type of energy in the positive sense it can be about being swept off your feet romantically and it can feel like a bit of a whirlwind like it is here in the card oh after a period four of cups here after a period of boredom or discontent or feeling bummed out i'm hearing left behind feeling left behind that could be this person or it could be you take it how it fits but either way you've had to let go of an attachment here but that's opening up room for so much more. And I keep saying, 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 I meant to say seeing. Yeah, again, there's a lot to do with communication or saying it like it is or speaking your truth. Now they're showing me somebody at a wedding giving a speech. It's like getting up, not being camera shy, being willing to voice 
your opinion or being willing to voice how you feel or how you truly see this situation. Somebody else saying it to you. After a period of being in their head about it and kind of like doom spiraling, doom scrolling, something about that. I'm seeing the black cat for good luck. So the more that you detach, the more that you cut cords, Mars can also be about like sharp things, scissors, cutting, but it can also be about conflict archetypally. So the challenger energy, like you've been challenged with this to face some of your fears, to face some disappointments, to face the loss of potential, but also to manifest more and to meet the challenge, rise to the challenge. I'm hearing rise to the occasion. And they keep showing me dolphins jumping through the air and fish jumping through the air. So something about the air element, because you do have Gemini and Aquarius, air elements are to do with communication. Getting air, I'm hearing, getting air. And they were showing me springboards yesterday and the day before, something about springboarding into like a new elevation of consciousness or spring springboarding or diving into something. I'm seeing 111. And you had four, 144 here, yeah. So there's an activation of some kind here. And it's connected to your soul purpose. So you're meant to cut these cords or to bury, I'm hearing bury these curses. Bury? Why bury? Bury the curses. I'm hearing relegate or yeah, relegate them to the past. So it's like not taking it with you anymore, laying something to rest. Yeah, grieving, grieving an old marriage, cutting that cord, allowing yourself to feel bummed out if that's what the case needs to be. Not getting attached to the potential, but instead focusing on manifesting something that is actually aligned and proves that to you through action, whether it's this person or someone else. And being completely detached from what the case is in that situation and just kind of watching how it unfolds. That's what they're showing me is like sit back and watch how it unfolds. You don't have to, to prove anything. You don't have to chase or to do anything. I'm hearing let it go. So just I'm hearing let them. Yeah, like let let them do what they're going to do. Let, let it completely go, detach, and then see what manifests because you're going to get information as something physically comes into being and it could be communication that comes in or it could be um, a potential for you to see something the camera makes me think of like the lens through which you're seeing something you could see something it could be something on social media because I did mention doom scrolling and camera everything that we put on social media for the most part is filmed on a, a camera whether it's on your phone or whatever so you might see something that changes your mentality and you realize some new new potential that is available to you and it's expressed. Oh, I did just hear expressed through a text. Somebody may be texting. Or you, this could have been someone you were in the texting stages with. She's holding a frog and that just jumped out at me. Something about holding a frog or... Um, what do they say? Eat the frog that's like doing the hard thing first. Somebody may eat the frog and then reach out, text how they feel. Frog in your throat is also, oh, that's an idiom that talks about um, having difficulty communicating. And as I said, um, it almost came out croaky, like, uh, like, a, like a toad. Yeah, this person has a frog in their throat. They have a hard time with communication. They do not feel comfortable voicing how they actually feel which may be why if they do reach out it's going to be through text because that feels safer because it's there's more distance between yeah because they were showing us the telescope before it's like they like to they like to have some level of emotional distance even though there's love there it's for self-protection i'm hearing yeah and i'm hearing karmic resolution and they're showing me a ceiling or the roof of something so it's like uh, oh, crown chakra could be involved here. They were showing us the hat and the jumping into the air element and the broom for flying. So it's like you're going to be, I'm hearing lift off. You're going to be lifting off or there's some going to be some kind of a flight that takes place. Or you're going to be elevated, energetically elevated. And that's going to manifest different. Maybe it's a new timeline. Yeah a new timeline and you're breaking past the ceiling of where you used to experience a limitation within this um, 
romantic dynamic or relationship. Yeah, you're breaking through that glass ceiling that was keeping you stuck at a particular frequency and continuing to get the same results. And they keep saying burying the curse in the ground, letting it go to rest, peaceful resolution I'm hearing, past partners released. Oh, you're cutting cords of marriage, either in this lifetime, like I was saying, or from past lives, like you're letting go of all of the people who came before. And they're saying placeholder again, because they they're showing me, oh my God, now they're showing me like holographic overlays of different people all sitting in the same chair. And it's like, they're all like stacked on top of each other. And so there was no room for anyone to come in or this one person who was meant to sit there, couldn't sit there because energetically there's like too much going on in that space. So you've had to work through this process, cutting these cords of attachment to the past, allowing yourself to fully grieve and taking the time you needed to be able to do that, doing the self-care, setting the boundaries, being on your own team. I'm hearing on your own side, being on your own side. Maybe this is like separation because I'm seeing this old book that I used to read as a kid. And there were these two sisters and they got into a disagreement or they got into a fight and they got really upset with each other. And then they drew a line down the middle of the room and they said, stay on your side. And I can't remember how the book ended, but I think that they both realized that they wanted to be together and that separation was really just an inconvenience. And then they they kind of like let their anger fade away. Mars can also be about anger. And then they they removed the line that they drew in the middle of the room and they just played together happily. And I'm hearing jumping for joy again. Okay, so it does feel like there's a reunion here. Or there's a reconnection or there's a, there was a separation at some point that may have bummed you out, but it was really helping you to cut this cord so that you can... I'm hearing reunite with the proper placeholder, the person who is actually meant to be in that seat. And that could lead to marriage because they keep, the word married is here and they keep showing me this example of a wedding, or being at a wedding with someone. Okay. I think that's the message, guys. That's what wanted to come through. So um, take what resonates, leave the rest. This is a general collective reading, but these are some channeled messages Spirit wanted to bring through, obviously. Now I'm going to jump into personal readings. And so I will leave it there. Thank you guys for being with me here today. I hope that this reading was helpful in some way. And if you would like a personal reading to dive deeper into any topics that you have areas of concern or questions around, I am for a limited time offer offering 45 minute video recorded readings. So the link to order is in the description box below. And thank you to everyone who has been so patient with the turnaround. I did get a lot more orders than were expected. So I've been working my way through. I think I have about nine left at this current time and I'll be getting to those over the next few days. So you'll be getting those in your emails, guys. <laughs> Pay attention to your emails. Check your junk mail if you haven't received it. And um, I hope you enjoy the readings here and the personal readings as well. And thank you to the members for supporting my work in that way too. And if you want to become a member, the link is also in the description box below to access all the members only readings and live streams as well, depending on the tier. All right, guys, I love you and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye.